Hey everyone, welcome to part two of Wild Air Glow at Whitefish Point. These are going to be the photos that I took of the night and how I took those photos. This may be a little bit of a long video, but I want to try to teach just kind of how I put everything together and what not only that was, but also the thought process of the image on how I took that image. So thanks so much for watching this video and enjoy these images. As we know from watching the last video that the moon was up and it was nice and bright. When I first got to Whitefish Point, it was about a 30% moon. So honestly, uh, in retrospect, it really wasn't that bright, but it created that nice ambiance for a lot of these first images. And, you know, with the moon, it makes it a lot cooler uh, with the images. So this was just a very quick shot. This is one of the, this is the shipwreck museum that is there with the moon there. You got that really cool kind of like moon spike right straight up and down and, you know, framed with Orion there and the red exit light illuminating the inside of the museum, making it look really creepy. But this was just a general shot F4 uh, ISO 1600 in just 20 seconds with the 14 millimeter. Very extremely simple and just a single shot. Here's another shot of the area. This was just up the walk path from the museum that I just showed you. I really like the interior light of the center house there. I'm not exactly sure what that building is but I really liked how it was a nice contrast of color between the cool atmosphere that the moon was causing and the warm glow of the house. It's almost inviting. Yeah, this is just a, a quick shot, something very simple again, used the exact same settings as the last photo. It was ISO 1600 F4 in 20 seconds, I'm pretty sure. So here's the shot of the rudder that I showed you in the previous video, but kind of the composition on what I wanted to do is I know I wanted this rudder to be pretty big and dominant in the photo. I wanted the lighthouse to be more so in the center and kind of in the background. And then we have Ursa Major or the Big Dipper here on the left kind of filling in that negative space where the rudder kind of fills up in the sky. And then we have that empty space to the left side there. So that's kind of how I wanted to compose it. And how I edited this was, it is a single shot, ISO 3200, 15 seconds, and F4. So just a simple single shot. I applied the noise reduction in Lightroom and general editing as well. And then I took it over into Photoshop, and then I did a star reduction technique on all of the stars except for the stars of the Big Dipper. And then I also got the paintbrush tool out and I selected the color of each individual star. And then I put like a 10% opacity and I just clicked a couple times on each star just to bring them out just a little bit more. And I really, really love the way that the shot came out. Here we are getting into some of the first panos of the night. This was my 14 millimeter pano that I had tracked on my move shoot move. The settings were two minutes, F4, ISO 800, and that air glow to the north was coming in super strong. You can even see some faint bands off to the south, uh, but that moon in the center of that negative space, very bright, even at 30%. Uh, we even able to capture some H alpha, which is pretty surprising. As I mentioned in a lot of my videos, my camera is not Astro modified. So picking up H alpha detail in space is not the easiest thing to do, but under super dark skies, it's, um, it's not too hard to do, I will say. Uh, but yep, just absolutely love the Milky Way arch there and the foreground was taken separately. Uh, throughout the night and I wanted to make sure that I did take the foreground while the moon was still up so the compositioning would make sense with the moon behind the lighthouse and you would still see the shadow of the lighthouse as well. 
So here is the first shot of the night for the panoramas. Here is the second version of the moonlit panorama. This one was taken with my 28 millimeter and I used a little bit different settings because I was using the move shoot move and I know the tracking isn't super accurate with my gear in particular. So I was doing F2 ISO 800 one minute for all the shots and there was a total of 18 shots and nine shots per row. Started on the bottom row and I went from right to left and then I went up a row and went from left to right. And I will say this was very, very challenging to do for uh, the sky because the moon I always avoid when I'm doing my panoramas. And I thought, you know what, let's challenge myself and actually have the moon be in the frame and not only in the frame, but in the sky in the same portion of the area that I'm photographing. So there's big swings of the amount of light that's gathered between when you're photographing the moon in frame and when it's not in frame. So around the three areas, the images, let me rephrase that, the three images that were around the moon as I'm panning, I used f2.8 instead of f2 for everything else. And that's because I just really was trying not to blow uh, any sort of faint details that were in the background. So I had six shots that were a bit darker uh, than all the other ones because they were shot at f2.8. And again, this is the same foreground from the last image. I just used them for both. And this was cropped to frame. And as you can see, I have that flagpole here. At least I think that's a flagpole uh, on the left side. And uh, this is the whole foreground that I used for this image because my aspect ratio was, I think, 16 by 9 for this one rather than the 4, 4 by 3 for the 14 millimeter pano. So... Overall, I really love this one a lot more, mainly because of the air glow and how it has the very distinct bands on the right side. But you can see that they almost kind of come in like clouds almost because you have the really distinct bands on the right side. And then you have this big swath right up the center, right overhead. And then to the south, you have another kind of cloudy swath of air glow as well. But... Of the two moonlit panoramas, this one is definitely my favorite. So the moon had just set, and I knew with the absolutely wild air glow, I wanted to take a full 360 degree shot, and this is that shot. What I did for this is I knew I was gonna need quite a few rows because I wanted to do several different compositions and I wanted to do it as quickly as possible. So I wanted to use the widest focal length I had, which was 14 millimeters. Now, uh, at this time, I actually had my time lapse going that you should have seen in the previous video with all the crazy air glow and the surprise aurora that we had. So I was using my really sharp 14 millimeter Sigma lens for the time lapse. So I only had my 14 millimeter Rokinon lens, which is a 2.8 instead of a 1.8. It was a, I had to use higher ISO. So my settings were 20 seconds, F 2.8 and ISO 6400, which for my particular camera, I find it to be just about the highest I really want to go. Cause otherwise the noise gets pretty dang bad and the colors they become a little washed out. And also I lose some high dynamic range as well there's the image just becomes very flat so 6400 is where I'm comfortable with for the most part so how was this done what I did is I started with the middle row and I did a full 360 and then I went up did a full 360 again and then went all the way down as far as I felt comfortable angled downward and I did another full 360 and then I pointed the camera straight up just to make sure I got that full 90 degree orientation and I also knew that this particular lens has really bad distortion on the far right side so I wanted to make sure when this is in portrait orientation it's the top of the image so I took a shot straight up just to make sure that the center of the image was going to be for that that kind of top of the frame so how did I put this together I used the program called PT GUI I go over that program in my video which is uh, take your Milky Way shots to the next level part two. I put all 33 images together and I 
just got the pro version, which lets me mask inside that program. So I was able to mask myself in for this particular shot that you see here with me with the light underneath the lighthouse. Then I just merged all the shots together and created this 360 degree panorama. This image here is the same 360 degree image that I just showed you, but in PT GUI, you have a bunch of these really artistic, unique projections for panoramas, and this is one of them. I believe it's like stereographic down is what it's called. You can also use the little planet feature, and you can just manually change the uh, orientation. Instead of looking downward at the ground, you're looking upward at the sky. So what I really wanted to do with the air glow is immediately in my mind's eye, this was the shot I wanted because the bands were just all over the sky. And I knew that if I did this particular projection in PT GUI, it would show me and show you, the viewer of the image, the full 360 of the sky and the bands of air glow all over it. And I'm so glad that this image came together to really show exactly how crazy the air glow was this particular night. And this next particular image is the little planet version of the air glow shot. And I really love how this image came out. It was a full 360, just like I was explaining. And it's just another way to observe and kind of show uh, the crazy air glow throughout the night and just how it looked and just a really cool, unique kind of spin on the environment that's around you. These little planet shots are just very unique and they're very fun to play around with. So here is the final shot of the night and the reason why I came to Whitefish Point to get this pano. Going right into the foreground, the foreground was taken with my 28 millimeter F2, two minutes and ISO 800. I really wanted a wide perspective just to make sure that I was able to get everything in it. Uh, I was planning on cropping in the sides, but just in case I uh, had the extra room to work with. At the end of the video, you could see how I just absolutely defeated I was because these clouds you can see here started moving in and man, oh man, I had to move locations from my original spot that I had thought. I had to go to that little dock ramp that was just like a two minute drive away and it was just very frustrating and you can see just how crazy the air glow was and the difference in color temperatures really made the image just ridiculously amazing to look at because of the awesome air glow but very frustrating to edit when i was in lightroom i had to figure out what color temperatures was going to look best for the whole image and what i ended up doing is i chose the image of the core and I figured out what color balance I wanted to use and it ended up being plus 20 tint for magenta and then it ended up being uh, 4,400 for the sky. And you can still see just how crazy teal and green the sky glow and air glow is there. It's just ridiculous. And then you get all these crazy green bands and orange and red on the left side of the picture. And what I had to do is I actually later on in Photoshop, I ended up doing two different gra uh, gradient masks to adjust the color temperatures even further to get them to match a little bit more. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a single frame of the southern sky and then a single frame of the Cassiopeia region just to show you how in Lightroom they have the exact same edit exact same color profile the sliders are all the same everything's the exact same and just how wildly different these colors are take a look here is that southern sky shot and man it's just so blue and green and then we have the other shot here which is the other end of the milky way and it was just so warm orange and yellow and it's just crazy how different the color temperatures are and then you put the full milky way arch together 
with the foreground, which I had made sure that it is an accurate alignment for photo pills. Uh, and of course, you get the final uh, edited image here. And man, this image just is amazing. And I will say that because of the clouds and the wind, this is not exactly the shot that I had in mind. I wanted the Milky Way to be higher and have more of a dramatic arch, but it needed to rise about one hour more, but the clouds were coming in and it was super windy and those guys were working on their boat and the lights were just shining everywhere. And I was only able to do one row for the panorama and the settings I'm pretty sure were, yep, the settings were one minute F2 ISO 1600 uh, for every single sky shot. And there was a total of 10 shots used for the sky. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed everything, kind of me breaking down everything and how it worked and how I put everything together, what the settings were and all that jazz. So thank you so much and look forward to the next video. Thank you.